thing. Let's get deeper into retargeting ads right quick. Now, best practice for years, basically from the get-go, was to target people that had abandoned cart or view product pages, what we call view content. And this has been pretty easy money for almost every D2C business, almost right from the beginning. Although it did take about three to six months for people to start engaging with DPA ads because what the hell is this carousel is what basically everybody ever said. It didn't exist before that. Facebook had to invest in changing consumer behavior. Something that we're seeing them do right now, by the way, with Facebook Shop. So what we want to do is initially get into the Events Manager. Now inside of Events Manager, you're going to see this lovely graph. Now, I've got a graph here. We're also gonna go through a couple other examples. What we're looking for is a good economy of scale to start running our ads to. Generally speaking, I like to focus around 10,000 events, which basically equals about three to 8,000 people, which means that if one in 100 of those people buy, we can make a couple dozen sales a day. And that's a great use case and an easy way to generate a lot more revenue and bring down your overall blended CPA. So let me show you how to figure this all out. So when you go to the events manager, it's gonna to default to showing you all of the actions that took place in the last 28 days. When we look at the last 28 days inside of this ad account, it's 75,000 ad cards. That's a lot more than 10,000. So let's start to pull back on the number of days. The easiest thing we can do here is go last seven days. Now, that's showing us 16,000. So let's constrain it just a little bit more. Let's go four days. And hey, look at that, 9.6 thousand ad to cards. That's pretty good. And we look at the graph, obviously it's all over the place, but this is a pretty solid data set for us to begin with. Let's go to another ad account and try the same exercise. So this is a completely different business, much higher volume. And when we look at the ad to cards over the last 28 days, it's 409,000. That's a lot more than 10. So maybe when we go to one week, yeah, that's uh, 73,000 events. Still way too many. In fact, it's about seven times too many. So what if we just did yesterday? Oh, 9.1 thousand. That's pretty close. Let's do that. Now, let's go for one more for all of you that aren't getting hundreds of thousands of ad to cart to you. Like, yeah, Charlie, of course, that works for them. What about me? Uh, let me show you one other business here. Now, when we go last 28 days here to the add to cart event, that's 20,000. So let's cut that in half. When we do that, what do we see? We see 7.6 thousand. Now, that's not a lot. And knowing that that's probably gonna be maybe even less than 2,000 people, and knowing that that's a pretty long window, maybe the place to start here isn't an add to cart at all. What if we went up to view content? Now view content over the last 14 days is 33 and a half thousand. So let's maybe cut this by a third. Last five days, and oh look at that, 10,000. Which tells us because we were able to project that number, it's also really consistent. And we can also see that on the graph, like it's not spiking, like this stuff makes sense. Okay, let's start there. What this means is on the first example, we're gonna launch with an ad to cart of the last four days. The second example, we're gonna do an ad to cart of the last 24 hours. And on this third example, we're not gonna do an ad to cart. We're gonna go view content last five days. Now this is only starting place, but this is where I start for every ad account. The point here is, if this works, maybe you can scale it up. If this doesn't do well, maybe you can scale it down. Maybe instead of lowering the budget, you can reduce the time. The idea here is, can I get a consistent result where basically I'm not spending my budget in full every single day and I'm getting a very high volume of transactions. So basically I can assuredly reduce my blended CPA and probably increase my second purchase rate because I'm not excluding buyers from this. 
I'm letting people come in and buy again. And yeah, if they were gonna buy anyway, oh well. If I can get an extra five or 10 sales and maybe 20 of them are duplicitous, I'm still making more money. And because the CPA is much lower than my average, my blended still looks good. Am I willing to pay a slightly higher blended CPA to massively improve my LTV? Yeah, because you know what else goes up? My PSM. I can spend more money anyway. So all of that being said, this is basic bitch DPA. You should be doing this. So let's actually take a moment and unlock the superpower that DPA provides that literally nobody is talking about. And I have done on every account for years and actually cost you next to nothing and will help you make a lot more money. Hey guys, real quick, if you want to learn my SOPs and frameworks for how I scale businesses and brands and Facebook ad accounts, check out the first link down below for the Facebook Ads MBA program. It's literally the greatest investment you can make in the growth of your future. It's lifetime access to not only an expanded curriculum with new courses every single week, but also a community of people around the world and weekly calls with me where we dive into not only the latest news, but also your ad accounts and fix your problems. So that being said, check it out. First link down below. And let's get back to this because we're about to expose something amazing. Let's do it. So first off, you're probably used to be using DPA ads to reduce your CPA or God forbid, give you a good ROAS. But let's start to use it to take a look at information that's actually 10 times more valuable. Now, before we get started, a dynamic product ad is a product catalog. It's the digital version of a magazine that a brand might send you in the mail that lets you see all of the products that they sell. So let me